So Instagram fame is a very complicated topic. I think Instagram is slowly dying. Oh man, Instagram fame, that's a good one. It's kind of hard to describe. <laughs> Basically, Instagram kind of created this sort of fame structure. Basically, they would go on like this this list and of who Instagram followed, like 200 people at a time for like two to three weeks. Um, and every time a new user like logged into Instagram and got an account, it would say, "You should follow this person." Um, so, like a lot of my friends got suggested. It was pretty much like if you were like artistic or like you knew the right people or like you were just like intermingling with the right people. I'm posting pictures of them, they're posting pictures of you, you get noticed and you get suggested. I've heard from people that that's more of where some have received the option, the opportunity to be suggested is, you know, when one friend gets it, they'll recommend another friend, they recommend another friend, it just kind of goes back and forth with friends recommending each other. The famous Instagrammers, like the adventure photographers, like Pacific Northwest photographers, they all hang out with each other. You see all their work and they their work kind of blends together. And everyone started taking the same photo of the same girl on a cliff of a blanket, you know, like just to fall in the footsteps of like what they think would be the path to success. The Pacific Northwest does have its own aesthetic. A Mexican blanket, a combat boots, some floppy hats, and, you know, wavy long hair. Out of Instagram, this whole idea of like living authentic came about and the hashtag and like everyone's trying to be authentic. Um, but at some point it became like, you're not really being authentic if you're like really trying to be authentic. <laughs> Out of this whole drive for popularity and drive for social media fame and acceptance and to be validated by other people, on social media came this like almost falseness about it. I saw so many people like posting like pictures in front of a waterfall like and I was susceptible to this too like in the beginning I definitely posted a few photos like this but really trying to capture this aesthetic that wasn't real but it was like presented as being real like let's all like wear our floppy hats and wear our leather jackets and you know like let's be these adventurers and explorers but like you're wearing Nikes you're wearing your best clothes out to go on a like five mile hike. Mondays are my, my go-to adventure days. Um, I kind of set, that, set that, that day aside to go out, pick out a location anywhere within Oregon, Canada, Washington. As far as three, four, five hours, doesn't really matter. I'll pick a spot, I'll go out to that area, um, and I'll you know, shoot around. Especially when I wasn't in school, I would sit there and that's all I did. All I did was edit pictures and go on adventures and that was, that was the life. Like, if you're actually like just enjoying nature, like you don't need to pick a photo of it. Instagram really targeted the Northwest. Like, for some reason a lot of people got suggested in the Northwest at like one time and they're all friends of each other. I've met a lot of friends through Instagram. Um, like, a lot of friends. It introduced me to opportunities to work with musicians which is what I want to do. Social media in a sense created this new type of job that's social media influencer um, so when you have a lot of followers on Instagram brands are very interested in tapping into that potential and it's not like a potential of like your creativity it's more a potential of like your marketing reach. There's a difference between like organic marketing and like paid marketing but the influencer side kind of like brought both of those together. You can pay an influencer to create organic content that would market for your brand. So I got contacted by quite a few different agencies or brands just to like create content and then basically just using me for my number and just post it on my page so that like it will reach a new audience that they haven't tapped into yet. So right now I'm shooting 40 pounds of different types of fish and <laughs> creating product photography for it. It's really difficult to photograph raw food without it making it look gross, so it's a challenge. <laughs> Probably like six months ago, I really like made a very public statement about like um, sponsored stuff and why I was doing it and you know how my followers I feel like were like losing this trust with me. But I needed the money and it was I it was like 
the uh, really easy way for me to make that money. Um, and I think people started noticing that I was becoming more of a billboard. Um, and that's something I never wanted to do. I never wanted to become a billboard for brands. Online, you, you comment, you talk, you follow, you, you know, you're inspired by certain photographers or people. And it's really awesome at an Instamy to be like, I know you, you know, we've been talking for a while. It's nice to finally meet you. An Instamy is when some person posts and they're like, hey, meet me at Volunteer Park and let's take pictures and hang out. And basically it's just a whole bunch of Instagrammers getting together, hanging out, taking pictures. Well, that's what they're usually meant for, but sometimes the experience can be a little different. So, so depending on if, you know, who's hosting, depending on who's, um, you know, if there's giveaways, um, depending on who's sponsoring, you really want to make sure that you get everyone together at some point to get all that out. My first one, I got into a car with someone I barely knew. Um, we drove all the way to Seattle. I didn't know anyone there. You can go connect with people, have fun, bring a friend, you know, make it the experience that you want it to. It was awkward. Like, you could tell the bigger Instagrammers. Um, we're very to themselves, like clicky. It's definitely very clicky. When everyone's suggested and certain people aren't, it's like they want to be suggested, so they want to hang out with you, they want to take photos of you, or they want you to take photos of them. So it kind of like becomes a popularity contest instead of like the genuineness that it was before. It was like, hey, we're all like just wanting some friends, we want to like explore, we want to get together, let's just hang out. It became more of like who can be the next, you know, thing. But in the back of your head, there's always like, oh, my friend suggested, I want to be suggested. I got kind of discouraged because a lot of my male friends got really popular on Instagram versus I didn't, and then they would get more opportunities, and it just got really discouraging. So it's like your friend gets suggested and you're not, and it creates this kind of like inadequacy, like where you think that like, oh, why am I not getting suggested? And I think along the way, it kind of started losing its intentionality, um, just because it turned more into a competition than, um, than just storytelling. When you get this many followers and you get that, that recognition, you really don't want to let it overtake your creativity. You don't want it to change you as a human. You know, if you're, if you're someone with 100 followers, you should still be that same someone with 100,000. So my persona on Instagram, maybe I'm a little more positive. Even though I'm positive in real life, if I'm having a bad day, I'll be like, I'll try to post something positive and be like, fake it till you make it kind of thing. I think there was just kind of this pressure underneath it all where you have to be a certain type of person, a certain type of leader, whatever that means, um, in this Instagram community. And it also, I think the people that follow you also shape ultimately the person that you will become. I don't want to be someone on the internet that is completely different than who he is in person. Um, I've seen too much of that. Um, I feel like that's what I love about Snapchat the most. I've even seen from photographers that I used to follow where on Instagram, you know, their captions will say something or, or they're going to, you know, post photos of beautiful landscape with some inspirational caption. And then once I started following them on Snapchat, it was a whole different perspective of their life that I didn't expect to see them live that kind of life. Did you meet Amy through Instagram? Tinder. Tinder, nice. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about like how, how you're selective with personal life and public life? Yeah, um, so I'm pretty pretty open when it comes to like, my personal life and, um, and social media. Uh, I think it's because social media was so, so much a part of my personal life that I don't really hide a lot of things. When I was younger, I definitely posted about my private life a lot more because I felt like I was friends with a lot of my followers and I mean I still am just like probably a lot less. I resorted to Instagram for kind of just, I don't know, emotional throw up, I really, that's what I call it. Um, but just venting, just venting whatever was on my mind, whatever was on my heart. Um, and just trying to get people to be more vulnerable because that was something that was really hard for me growing up, being vulnerable because I didn't grow up in a very tight-knit family so you couldn't like cry in front of your mom or dad unless you know someone had died or something um, and so I really just wanted 
I needed I needed that. I needed a place where I could vent, and Instagram provided that for me. I definitely don't post as much because I think my life is my life, and if I want to share my private life with someone, then I'll tell my friends versus posting it online and putting it out everyone else to see because I'd rather not have that unless it was something like my mom's in the hospital I'd really like it for prayer and that kind of stuff like when my dad passed away I, I like before I even knew he was like gonna pass away I like posted asking for people to pray about it um, definitely told my story of like my dad passing away since then I'm able to express things and people can either acknowledge it read it or you know, just keep scrolling away. If they don't want to see what I write or they don't like my picture, they can just scroll away. But I, I feel like I do have the ability to be more freely expressive online than I would be in person. In person, I have personal barriers. I'm, you know, I, I, I'm not able, I, I just have more of a fear of communicating with others in the sense that, I, you know, I just don't want to, um, I'm just afraid to say the wrong thing or, you know, I'm afraid just there's fears. There's fears that get in the way of communicating with someone or a group of people in person um, that don't get in the way on online.